Uh, I'm sitting here in the set of uh, Turner's M Kino, of uh, members of 85 Air Collective. Uh, what them just sells? I'm Judd Brook from 85A. I'm Zephyr from 85A. Okay, so the, the first thing I wanted to talk about was uh, just how that this is an incredible kind of interactive sort of art film installation, which has come out of a film that Judd has been working on called Chernozem. Would you like to d talk about how it came about? Uh, it's it's an idea that I uh, brought to the collective probably a couple of years ago, and then it was it was realized it was produced by 85A. So not dissimilar to a lot of the other uh, projects where if something comes about and someone has an idea, then it's sort of presented at uh, an initial sort of production meeting, and it was kind of like uh, kind of bashed about. And then uh, there was the opportunity to, uh, to actually start filming. Five minutes. So yeah, it was 2010 in the fall. We had our uh, first production meeting uh, in Maxwell House, and that was like is the whole crew, and it was just like and all the uh, the extras, and or actually not the extras, but it was just like it, it basically swelled the ranks of uh, of uh, of 85A, and then we started filming in October, and then. Um, two weeks, which was kind of the initial but, uh, mm -hmm. schedule. That was, um, yeah, uh, <laughs> we're up in Mugduck Country Park as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it was almost like the first, not the first frost, but it just like, it started getting cold, then two weeks turned into kind of Christmas, and then <laughs> kind of like a war, the next thing you know, it was two years <laughs> later, two and years it just later. like, just finished filming, um, yeah, about a month or so ago. So uh, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a long haul, but it's been really fun. And um, yeah, so it's just like, uh, uh, Chernozem was uh, basically it's like when when I, I've I've been living in the city since 2003, and uh, first impressions it's just like it's it's pretty fucking impressive in terms of the the the, the remnants of the the industrial revolution which is inherent in the city. It's a lot of it's crumbling, but it's like it's still it's it's here. It's heavy. It's like it's it's um, it's it's awesome in the true sense of the word. Just to to know that it's there, and so this idea was sort of um, formulated uh, around trying to sort of capture part of this, uh, this this crumbling infrastructure of Glasgow and then um, yeah the story was grafted on top of it with uh, with a fellow with a machine for a head and the chain gang and sex slaves and it just like <laughs> it just started kind of rolling from there and then uh, next thing you know we're uh, yeah we're in the glue with a uh, massive show in our hands and it's, it's all been fun. So can, can I maybe ask how the you know, you know your, the re your reaction to this kind of crumbling technology affected the aesthetic of the film. In the sense, that, you know, there's been a lot of work done in recent cinema trying to make cinema more interactive with technology like 3D, IMAX, etc. You made an interactive film in black and white, and it's silent. How did that affect, affect the aesthetic? Basic, you know why? It's just like there's you get 3D IMAXs coming at you, like you know, like left right and center and it's just like it's like hyper technology and high def and it's just I, don't know, I suppose part of it is uh you know it's it's a it's a kickback against that i mean i don't know about you Zach, but it's just like basically it's just like there's it's just there's, there's something about hyper realism which is just almost like a bit of a well it's a real turn off and just to have something which is just like i don't know a bit more real i mean the thing is too it's like um as we we're just uh, saying it's uh, before it's VHS cameras. I mean, you know, this is something that a lot of us would probably run around with when we were like 10, you know, making films. And it's just like, yeah, so, and it's, and, you know, in terms of money, it's just like, you know, we're not shooting on films. Uh, so it's, you know, the costs are way down. We're not even shooting on like, you know, and, um, you know, and like a high def or anything like that. It's just like, it's so, it's, it's very DIY. I mean, I think that's something that, you know, with the, with the, with the collective itself, it's just like, I mean, I don't know. Like, how does it how does it feel to be, I don't know, kind of working on something which is like, I don't know. It, it, it kind of feels like a gang has gone out and made a film, you know? Yeah, and I think that's that's something that's important to the everything that we've done, and and will continue to be so. And I don't think it was just a necessarily a reaction against one particular thing or the way that cinema is viewed. It's just, it, you know, in general, in the way we make work. This, I mean, we're surrounded by the the 
the individual works of different uh, members' practices within the group itself, and it's just like so. It's an extension of that. Um, I think it's 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 partly reaction to kind of what it, what's out there, but I think it just it just came natural, you know. Like there's a lot of like you know it's it's us sort of like going down to fucking White Inch and like getting confronted by Neds and then kind of actually befriending them and like you know and then uh, and then sort of shooting in around it. It's, I think it's been a very what kind of an organic way of of creating it. Um, it's been a lot of fun, just like going out on set. I mean, some of the some of the days when it was absolutely gorgeous, and we're up at like uh, say Drimmen in this uh, what an abandoned oh, stone that quarry. Oh, so beautiful that day. Yeah. Sun's out. <laughs> we're all in costume. We took we took like what three van loads of people up there. It was just like yeah, you had a big picnic. You know, we got some got some uh, some shots in the can, and it was just like wow, this is this is absolutely a blast. You know, I don't think we've been rained out once to tell you the truth. So kind of like no good wood. Incredibly lucky in Glasgow, but but one of the things I've seen about was how people normally expect films to be. One of the things that interests me about Chernozem is the way that you play with people's expectations and notions of entertainment. I'm thinking of scenes where, where you force people to eat popcorn, whereby you force people to watch a peep show, and of course the climax, which I don't want to give away just here. But uh, how, how, how did you play with these notions of entertainment in Chernozem? You know what? It's just it. I think. Uh, I mean, this is off the back of uh, 85A pre uh, presents Young Spunkmire, which we did at the at the Glue itself um, for the for the GFF, and that was uh, we sort of cut our teeth with that. And I think over the I think the course of what um, you know, sort of all the all the the, the major shows and, and sort of performances that we've worked on, I think we've kind of developed a way to you know sort of like entertain the. You know the uh, the punter, so to speak, and this just developed, or this was, we were able to take it that much further in the sense that, you know, not only is it, um, you know, working with the films that they're watching. Swampmire was really cool. I totally loved it, but it was much more. It was a passive affair. Yeah, it was much more. You kind of strolled around uh, instead of being led or. Uh, it, or, yeah, I don't know what's the word. Uh, Forced. <laughs> well, that's it. And the fact that we're dressing people up, it just kind of felt like that, you know, we had control over sort of like, well, first of all, like, um, you know, uh, not unlike, um, you know, the student of Prague that we did sort of way back in like the, in the Now Museum or the Orgel film performance. Um, I was working with other people's films, which was great. And I think, um, you know, again, we sort of, uh, you know, learned uh, how to kind of manipulate the, yeah, like in a good way, the, the, the audience for that, I get that, what, sort of that immersive uh, uh, that effect so that you feel like you're being sort of within the, the set itself. Whereas Orgel was, you know, it was sort of the hall and then a couple of other little cabins. I mean, we've got, was it 14 rooms that were? Yeah, all together, um, yeah. 14 sort of uh, cinemas that were that we're working with, and it's just a, it was it was a real opportunity opportunity to just to propel people in various ways, whether they're physically being pushed within um, uh, mechanisms, uh, whether they're having to climb or sort of a run or be chased to sort of a outside around the building, or it's like yeah, and I, I you know it, it's one of the things that we've always said as well is that with the initial idea was that. Um, it was going to be similar to a ghost train that you'd find at uh, what, the fun fairs or, yeah. or Coney Island. More Islands. like a ride mm. as opposed to, mm. I, I, yeah, something you'd walk around. Yeah, and that was. Uh, yeah, and that was one of the things that we always wanted to just explore, like and like the and the pace and the flow. That was something that was very conscientiously just uh, sort of discussed. And you know, with each show, we're you know we're, we're fine tuning it. And and again, because we've got what, upwards of well, 30 people uh, in three different uh, uh, groups revolving through the the glue factory at any given time. Yeah, and so it comes down to timing, and it's just uh, and it's just. Uh, you know how to you know have uh, an, a, a, a scene which is has impact to it, but without losing any of the integrity, and then also bearing in mind that we can't let them go through that door a little too soon because then they'd be bumping into the group ahead of them, and, and so on and so forth. But no, it's been really fun, just like being able to. Um, I don't know, almost like putting yourself into the position of like, what would I like around this corner? Or, or like, uh, just like... <laughs> That's been my uh, joke for the last... <laughs> oh, you've been amazing. Um, and, and, Scaring people. And just like, 
<laughs> well, the, it is. It's totally. It's a, it's an absolute blast. It's 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 fun for us, and like from all the, the feedback as well that we've we've had from people get sort of like spat out into the bar here. It's just like they're like. Oh, that was like the best Sunday night I've ever had or just like they're just kind of like I don't know there's something about like getting that getting the heart going as, as opposed to I mean we've all seen films you know like where you know all of a sudden it's just like oh shit oh, okay or, you know but when you're physically you know sort of projected into the into the action itself I think it just kind of like it breaks down that fourth wall and it becomes this like theater past Mirai or something but um, yeah no uh, I think we I think we've accomplished uh, what we've set out to achieve with that anyway. So. Well, certainly it's, it's certainly it's one of the most disorientating, but also one of the most exciting things I've seen in ages. And I think this uh, that part of it does of course come as well through the way that the spectator is programmed at the beginning of the of the film, and then of course with the again the masking and costuming of the spectator, it, it's, it's just you, it's just supremely disorientating, and you're immediately thrown off your balance and into the film. Uh, I mean, have you had have, have, have any negative reactions of people about that? Are people genuinely freaked out by that? Um, well, I've been working a lot in here as people come out, and we do have like reactions of it made it more scary because a mask almost eliminates the people around you because you all you, you know you can't see each other's faces and, and such but um, also I think what's been really nice the good comments out of it is people willing uh, I just say like allowing themselves to have more reaction because they're not looking at what their friends doing you know they're not they're not they if they want to laugh they laugh if they want to scream they scream you know and so I think for me that's a lot of what's screaming. yeah yeah a lot of screaming I think for me that's what's been really nice about it is the gen the genuine reaction has been allowed to come by making these like making people wear masks and it's also quite it's quite fun as well and yeah it kind of brings it all together in a way that people can really feel part of it because we're all in costume and you know, it's nice to make people a little bit more black and white. Well, that's the thing too. Well, it, it, if you have, I mean, that's the aesthetics of 85A, sort of black and white <laughs> as well. And it's just like if we're going to have people, you know, being sort of, you know, projected into the into the film, well, then we want to control that element as well. And so that was, you know, dressing them up first and foremost, um, desensitizing the individual, and that's another sort of idea which we're, you know, we're playing with as well. And it's just like because the, the the characters of the of the prisoners which feature in the film itself and so you're seeing kind of like yourselves on camera you know and then you've got this sense of like because um, we're able to treat the you know the audience with um, it, it's not disdain it but it's like you know if, if they're if they're already a, uh, you know a prisoner and they've willingly accepted that that role well then all of a sudden then you've created this sort of this um, almost like a, a situation which allows it to be uh, that much more sort of I think exhilarating for you know, for the you know the people who are like well ourselves, we're presenting this scenario, and then we don't really know how people are going to react. A lot of, I mean, it's been it's it's been mm -hmm. with the masks especially. It's been far better than we anticipated. We we kind of thought that people would maybe like go oh mask, don't really want to wear that. Everyone kept them on. And every like I maybe saw two two girls that didn't want to put them on, you know, because they had the eyelashes. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, it they still wore them on the back of their heads, which we thought more people would do so in that way it's been really positive and in terms of like actually like part participating in that kind of thing and i think you're able anytime someone why well, i find from my own experiences whenever you put on a mask it's like all of a sudden it's just like your inhibitions are you know, I think they're opened up that much more so that all of a sudden, like, you came with, like, say, a group of five friends or something, all of a sudden you're looking around at a group of ten, you don't know who your mates are, and all of a sudden you've got some fucking thing running at you from it, it's just like, ah, oh, you know, and all of it, and it's just like, it. I think it's that sort of that sense of, um, I don't know, it's like illusion and fantasy and sort of, um, I don't know, just uh, setting up a scenario so that when people are pres present and within it, then they're more free to uh, yeah. respond. Whereas if they're sitting at a seat, you know, in the UGC or something like that, you know, you can still react in such a way, but you're not gonna fucking shat yourself or, you know, <laughs> or just like and start running for your life if like, you know, if something uh, is is uh, is coming at you. So yeah. um, no, for sure, it was, it was like a kind of it was never really discussed like massively. Um, and then Sarah, who that makes the costumes here, made them, and instantly we were like, that's it, really fit. And it was really good and 
yet it's been like the masters have been a great success. No, but I think I think it works. I think it works really well. It does totally. You know, it just immediately disarms the spectator and puts you into another way of you know interacting or playing with the film. Having said all that, do you think you could go back and make Cherno's M and maybe complete it as a conventional film? Well, you know what? That was that was the idea. Uh, yeah. Well, that was the that's the. I mean, it's the lovely thing about this uh, about this. Um, project itself which is Chernozum Kino and then we've got Chernozum the film itself which uh, we're going to yeah you know we're going to send off to you know the film fest and we're going to you know so that's more of like the you know the um, you know the traditional route but the other like that said because of the the nature of the, of the the way we'd set it up and you know and allowing time just to physically get from A to B into the next cinema, we've had to cut between like what thirty and sort of forty minutes out of the out of the final sort of edit itself. So essentially, there's like there's an entire you know sort of uh, I mean there's a there's a full on um, basically near feature film which is yeah. like which is here which people. Um, if you if you came back and saw that, like it would be a, a, a completely new experience. And then there's like you know there's sort of like sub stories, and it's like there's the and, you know maybe the exposition would um, yeah it would just like maybe like sort of pound you that much more as well. So I don't know. It's uh, it's exciting the fact that we've got sort of two projects here yeah, uh, and simultaneously. Yeah, and one also allows the other to to grow or to build upon you know from certain things that we're doing he here or we have done in the when making the film, you know? One of the things that was always talked about as well is that there was the possibility of doing the, the final climax scene live. Um, and we, we discussed it and we were just trying to figure out in terms of like, you know, how it would work and, and whatnot. We found that it would it'd be best to actually film it first. Um, and so they're watching it. it. We could just sort of control the situation, and especially if we're wanting to, to build up to, uh, to that as well, but that said, um, there are some uh, set uh, pieces in here which um, we have filmed. We are going to film once uh, once the, uh, the kino is over, uh, and then that will be um, well. We've got the option of editing in, um, and and uh, supplacing uh, scenes within the you know the, the film version itself. So that's really exciting, and the fact that it it is uh, it's quite interchangeable. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll certainly be looking forward to Chernozem. Um, uh, I'd say that's a wrap. Unless yeah. you've got anything to yeah. like, send something off. Yeah. Uh, if uh, you know what, if you haven't, if, if people, because it's basically been sold out shows down here, and if someone hasn't seen the show uh, at Kino itself, well, don't fret. You can still get the you still get the bejesus scared out of you when uh, when Chernozem <laughs> comes out on uh, on DVD at uh, at an underground cinema near you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> nice one. Cheers, Brian. Is that okay? Go ahead. Is that good? I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice one. Cheers.